we're going to be going to a game number two between Excel Esports and Winky Face. This time, we're going to be heading over to the pretty normal Infernal Shrines. Now, this was the map pick of Winky Face, and hopefully they'll be able to have a little more success here. I think they need to opt for a little bit better meta picks and they'll find some more success in their team fights. Like I said, uh, Greymane is a little bit off meta in my opinion nowadays. If we look at how well he's actually doing in things like Eastern Clash, Western Clash, I'm going to take a look actually right now. Greymane, in terms of stats, for instance, let's pull up all the assassins. Greymane uh, had what's considered a tier four ranking at the Clash based on Ma masterleague.net. He was played seven times. He lost four times, won three times. So a 42% win rate, not considered a very successful pick. In the Western Clash, we're going to see a very similar situation overall. And in the Western Clash, if we take a look, a gray man was played a little bit more, but had almost identical success. Four wins, five losses. But we're already in the draft, and we're going to kick it on over there. So we're going to see the Asmodin, Ban, and the Rainer. I honestly don't think Excel Esports really should have banned the Asmodan because he didn't get the value that you'd hope. And without good old Jimmy, there's not going to be any Jimmy here tonight, guys. I'm really sorry. And we're going to see the Golden Hand and the White Mane banned out. We saw the Golden Hand do okay. I honestly didn't think it was that great overall but the white main on the other hand is definitely definitely a solid ban the diablo on infernal shrines absolutely perfect i mean he has plenty of walls to bang someone into he's super tanky but that also denies the phoenix the great synergy between lightning breath and purification salvo so alex straza definitely pretty good they did just nerf the life binder and her win rate has dropped a little bit because of that not enough to actually make her uh what do you call it make her really fall out of the meta in my opinion but it is a little worse overall nowadays with a blaze being banned out do you really want to give them your rel and I'd say probably not. So you ban out Urel now because they get the next pick and they're going to pick up their solo laner. So that's exactly what we'll see here. Urel will be banned out, which means Tahaka is probably now the choice of Winky Face. If I was drafting at least, I'd say let's go Tahaka. Tahaka is pretty juicy. There's lots of bushes for people to come out of. And he has great flanking potential, especially with a team in comms. He burrows onto the side comes and pops on out and bam a wild Dahaka appears and Barney's silencing you for talking mean about him. Instead we're going to get Maev and Johanna. I think they could have saved the Johanna 100% here unless they're going to put Phoenix in the solo lane which I don't think is the way to go but Johanna could have 100% been saved to the, the very last pick here and I would say that it's probably the optimal way to go. However, it's not actually going to be Dahaka. They're going to opt for Sonya instead of the Dahaka, which isn't bad, but I don't think this is the right choice overall. The Hanzo, pretty good. I mean, there's once he gets the piercing arrows is really where it comes in. The big problem is that the, the scatter shot here can be denied by all the skeletons on the objective which means it's often hard to get the value however if he picks up at level four the explosive arrows for a storm bow it's very easy to get value you throw out the q and storm bow will hit them and explode and all of a sudden people are taking explosions to the face
Now, the draft this time for for Winky Face is looking better in my opinion. The big question mark is how well Malthale will do. They have essentially a triple front line on the side of Winky Face. Malthale can execute Diablo. And Decker doesn't really have a tool to prevent last rights from, from coming through, which means that if he gets low enough, Malthale will secure the kill. Now, Malthale will be their solo laner and can potentially win against Sonya, depending how G Money actually performs. We're going to hop on into the game now, as we got that all ready to go. So, first things first. We got Thick Mane on the Hanzo. Poop Feast 420 on the Diablo. G Money on the Sonya. Hysteria on the Jaina. EO on the Deckard Kane. And that is going to be Excel Esports. On the other side, we got VZ on the Alex Straza. Brick House on the Phoenix. We got. Spogino on the mouth ale, Jenzers on the Maev, and finally Tuni Moss once again on that Johanna, and that is going to be Winky Face. So getting a much nicer position on the side of Excel Esports, they're going to start poking on down. Very nice arrow from Thick Main there, and we're going to see uh, what talents we got here. Squirrel of Identify, War Paint, Fingers of Frost. We're going to get target practice here. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm sure they can make it work perfectly fine we also have feast on fear and on the other side we have the mobile offense hold your ground on a pale horse naisha's memento and finally live and let live now one thing i didn't point out last game is that i feel scroll of identify is a trap talent the reason it's a trap talent is because you have to use your scroll to try and get people locked down and you want to complete this as fast as possible so if you're using it on cooldown to try and complete the quest you're likely going to miss potential kill opportunities so you have to hold it to get the kills and if you're holding it to get the kills well then you might never actually complete scroll of identify versus sapphire which will allow you to get someone into your scroll very easily due to the extra slow they're basically 100 percent trapped in there Taking a look at how top lane is going, Spogino is winning this right now. And it only gets worse once level 4 comes around. So if G-Money can't handle the heat right now, well, he's going to have to pay up and uh, get some help there and or tap to stay in the lane. Very nice position from Tunimos to help interrupt any rotations. Now, he has to be careful as if there are four members who rotate down, the Hysteria can collapse from the bottom and flank. And we'll keep Johanna in the mid lane to keep the soap safely. So very nicely done there by Tootie Moss. Level 4 has been hit. I'm going to take a look and see what we got here. Uh, do we have the choice? Yes, we do have Die Alone. So at this point, I don't think G-Money can realistically win if he's been losing the lane prior to level 4. So... Everything is pretty even here. The rotations from the, the rotations from Winky Face have been much more clean and much better overall. Like I said, Towers of Doom is a much more macro heavy map in my opinion. There's the pull on back, and there is the scroll as well. The condemn's gonna come out, but not really gonna mean a whole lot there. And they're all gonna walk away parting and venturing on up to the first shrine. At this point, both teams will have all members here very shortly with a very early advantage on the side of Winky Face. Now, we got the zoning from the Blizzard. Toonie Moss going on and team is not committing with him, however, and they're going to back off for now. And the scroll not going to actually seal anyone in position. The Condemn on to Poop Feast 420. It's going to back on out for now, and it looks like EO will tap on up in the meantime. 
So it's 23 to 11. They're going to have to commit very hard now. The dragon has been popped. The lockdown. And Poofy's coming on hot. And there's the big healing from VZ. And say goodbye to Poofy because he'll be the first one going on down. And Winky Face are going to secure the first objective of the game. So, Excel Esports showing a domination on Towers of Doom. This time, they're looking a lot more iffy overall. And Spogino getting a lot of value with that Malfail as well. So, Poop Beast, 420, was only at 45 souls. Not quite at the point where he's terribly scary. Additionally, I don't believe he actually procced Feast on Fear. And without having Feast on Fear procced, well, that's a lot of healing you're missing out. Additionally, because of the fact that he's not at 100 souls, even if he does proc it, it's going to be less valuable. In the meantime, a top lane is once again in control by Spagino. He is burning through the mana, but it's not really a big deal. He's going to tap, get his mana back and be ready to go and really winky pace is controlling infernal shrines overall their macro game is really on point toonie moss is keeping the vision they pick up the merc camps and they know where excel esports are based on their general rotations where they're showing and we're actually going to get thick main rotating on up here i like this if g money is not getting what he needs then just send thick main up here in the meantime to help him so G Money can go on back and or rotate somewhere else. So the Stormboat is only at 3 out of 5. I don't believe it tells us uh, right now where it's at. But Feast, oh, Jenzer is not actually going to be overpowered. But he does have that escape either which way. So it is a 3 versus 1. And without the rotation from multiple members here, this front wall is all but dead. Because we have Sonya doing camp at the moment. We have Hanzo holding the top lane and Jaina holding the mid lane. Which means it's a very easy 3v1 situation. I like that Excel Esports are not picking up this camp. A lot of people will make the mistake of picking this camp up. And, and if they pick it up early, not pushing with it. If they do pick it up later, that's when you need to go and take advantage of your 5 man. Because they're going to have to either deal with the shamans. Or they're going to have to give up some of the top structures. So once again, we are now at 4 out of 5. We've got 12 stacks, 9 stacks, and 79 souls. This time around, we're going to see the subdue picked up by 2D. We're also going to get the touch of death here. Uh, not your typical pickup, especially against a Decker Kane. It doesn't seem necessarily that valuable. The Blizzard will drop on 2D, but with Iron Skin, he walks away with nearly uh, nothing being done to him. Like a fresh, cold breeze running through Johanna's hair. So, tents have been picked up. We got the Blessed Shield. We have the Last Rites. We got the Containment Disc and the Cleansing Flame. So, Spogino is actually rotating down entirely. Top is going to be cleared up. And once again, they have yet to pick up their Bruiser Camp. So, this Bruiser Camp is going to get insane value. G I don't know what G-Money is doing. Okay, there we go. Needs to get this cleared up asap where where's he going okay they've made the call it looks like to pick up the bruiser camp and come on down to actually do the objective okay clamp is cleared they're now finding dandy and they can now fight with the five men and get value out of their shamans however they picked it up a little too late in my opinion there comes the wall and listen amaya the only one in it the apoc going to be coming on out is only going to hit one the dragon meme is going to do nothing as expected because it's such a bad heroic and there's the overpower ring of frost going to come on out not really going to get any value and g money is going to be torn apart right now and pulled on back by jenzers and that is the first blood of the fight poof fest does have last rights on him and down they go a two for one and winky face are smiling here as they get themselves a punisher and two kills along with all of diablo's souls This Punisher is going to get a lot of value. You can see this Shaman Camp was starting to get value. But if they picked this up 10 seconds earlier, they would have been 
down their front wall. At this point, though, they're not. Um, this is... This is a little Monka s because Punisher decided to abandon, abandon the keep entirely. They walk it on up to their front, which means that this is a very easy clear for Excel Esports. And with that, Winky Face now has the opportunity to do as they please. It's time to paint the map red. They're going to get the bottom camp, they'll get their camp, and then they'll be able to just wait around in a bush because they do have a talent advantage as well. Or they can even push into bot with a camp advantage, or they can push into mid. A uh, next objective is yet to show if it's top or mid, but either which way, top is opened and mid is open, making Winky Face capable of going in very, very hard like that right now. There's the Blessed Shield Purification Salvo coming on out as well. And it hates Hysteria getting low. But stay a while and listen because EO is going to peel for days. And they have traded out one for one. Alex Straz is down. Sorry, a one for nothing. A second kill for Excel Esports. G Money going to miss the spear onto Brick House. And they are going to get themselves the two kills that they need to start regaining control of this map. With that, they're not going to give up this camp whatsoever. So, what Winky Face did, I commend. However, they should have picked up their siege camp before doing that. It would have given additional pressure. There would have been more minions pushing on in. And, well, and that's one less camp for Excel Esports to have taken. Bot lane has pushed in, but it's not going to get any damage on the front walls. In the meantime, double siege was in mid as we just saw the demise of uh, one of those siege camps. Now, Shaman Camp is fully available here, but is not quite available on the other side. They still have another 35 seconds, which means that they need to prep it really, really quickly for the next shrine phase as the next shrine phase should be coming online uh, rather shortly. So I like this rotation from Winky Face. They know where Hanzo is. They have all five up here and they have a shaman camp coming on in. They can push on in and try to take the well and or the fort even. They now see where everyone is in part thanks to a 2D. But without another creep wave here, the shaman camp is actually going to get no value. And because they didn't push in as soon as possible, well, they're not going to get any. The APOC and to stay a while, going to connect on two members. The Ring of Frost on top of that. Dragon meme is going to tear them apart as well. BZ getting low. No cleansing flame going to make you escape from that one. And that is two members of Winky Face and down for the count right now as they are going to chase around 2D Moss and pick up a fourth. So we're going to see Winky Face come on in here. They're going to come on in without really ever getting the pressure onto any of these objectives. At that point, well, EO sets up a beautiful stay a while and listen, and then the APOC coming out locking them down they're all obliterated they're all goners and poop feast just pooping on vz there keeping him from escaping with the cleansing flame and just very very nicely done on the side of excel esports now this will be their first Punisher. They actually have Spogino trying to help push in bottom to get the pressure relieved. As I would like to see Spogino just push in. Take, trade the top or the bot. This is a winning trade in my opinion. One, you want to get 16. Two, if they don't respond, then you take a front wall. If they do respond, Spogino can rotate up faster than G Money, and that's exactly what's going to happen. 16 is around the corner. They are going to rotate up, and if they keep pushing in, this is going to be a 5v4 situation. Yes, they are going to have the Punisher, but they can run past the Punisher, especially after that. So 2D Moss should have popped Iron Skin there. That's a bit of a misplay there. 
and the route will actually confirm the completion of scroll of identity identify at this point i'm not sure what spagino is doing it is a 5v4 but i really feel like he should have rotated up and just fought him Jenser's going to take a bunch of damage spagino is going to spot him out but he does have that additional movement speed and will be able to escape so winky face playing it i feel a little too safe there Definitely an opportunity to come on in with Spagino and try and force that 5v4 situation. Especially without Dragon's Arrow, it's a much easier fight. You do not want to be wombo comboed, and trying to take the fight on your terms is a much better situation overall. So Spagino will be coming on back down here, and he has to be careful and will take up a very, very safe position. Now, sitting in the bush for the next objective, perfect on the side of Excel Esports. You have very little you can accomplish. And if you happen to spot someone out, well, you can rotate onto them if they are too far forward. Like if Spagino starts clearing and walks all the way up here, then they're dead. <laughs> and you can see both teams doing the same thing. Both teams posturing. But in this case, Xiaomi Camp is up. And now they know where all members are. They're going to get themselves some more XP on Excel Esports. And really, they should just confirm that real fast. We're going to play some Ring Around the Rosie. We've got the Heretic Cube being thrown out there to try and dismount him and or find him. But being mounted, they're able to outrun the cube. And... The, ooh... Excel Esports coming on in. EO going to actually be leading the charge. And now they're going to be forcing the situation in here. This is not a place that Winky Face wants to fight, especially with APOC. This is just a winning team fight for Excel Esports should Winky Face try and contest us. Now, I like that they just gave this up. Like I said, I don't feel this was a fight that Winky Face would realistically be able to win. And because of that, they'll just clear this up without any contention. Now, bot lane Spagino continuing to push this up. I wished he'd get a little ballsier and get one more wave, and then he can hit the vent or just run down and around. He does have that extra movement speed. It is definitely risky, but I'd like to see the additional pressure starting to be applied to that bottom keep. With this, 20 is not on the table for Excel Esports. Which is going to be exactly what Winky Face is hoping for. This is the fight. This is basically the do or die. Unstoppable has been popped by Johanna. And Jenzer's going on in deep. The containment is actually going to hit no one. And we got the APOC coming on out. Going to completely whip. Stay out while and listen was interrupted. The Dragon Arrow going to go through Tuni Moss. Purification Salvo coming out as well. But not going to do a whole lot of good. And at this point, 2D Moss has been chunked down, and really, the side of Excel Esports is looking rather healthy. Now, they can still fight this. They have Blessed Shield, they got Cleansing Flame, and there's Jenzers going on in again. They're looking for the Blessed Shield onto the back line. Stay a while and listen, we'll pop and hit four members in the power of Diablo coming on into Body Spagino in the Ring of Frost. They have just been obliterated on the side of Winky Face. And, well, their Winky Faces at this point are going to be turned upside down into frowns. Because they are now facing a Punisher. They have three members dead. And they're facing level 20s. So, this could be the game winning Punisher. They have 30 seconds before Johanna is back. That camp is going, or that Punisher will get up to this keep. They can go and continue to push in with a 20 versus 18 scenario. There is no planet that Winky Face gets 20 without getting significant kills. Additionally, well, this is a fairly healthy Punisher, and it's the worst kind to deal with. The Arcane Punisher. Arcane Punisher now down to 75% life. Johanna is up in a second, but that means they're going to face a 70% HP. Wait, are they backing here? Excel Esports are backing with a 70% Punisher in level 20s? This is 
This is definitely suboptimal. You have a level 20 advantage. There's no reason not to push in with this Punisher. Look, look at all of those lasers. There's a double stun right there. I mean, they could have got, they get nothing out of this, arguably. They take a fort in the front wall, big whoop, but you're allowing your opponent to hit level 20 here if they don't make a mistake. All right, 2D pretty far forward, does have Iron Skin though. They're all MIA and 2D's going on an adventure and not the kind of adventure that Lily wants to have. They're looking for the back door here. Blizzard's gonna come on down and they're gonna get themselves a keep very likely. And there's pretty much nothing they can do here. They tank it through and call it a day and get themselves two. Are they gonna try and take this fight? The interruption beautifully done from 2D, the containment disc. Are they trying to really do this? This is not the fight to take. The purification cell coming on out. Last right is going to help secure the kill on Johanna, but the wall bang from Poop Beast followed up by Hanzo's damage. And that's gonna be game. Excel Esports. Well, coming from behind, taking control in the mid to late game and get themselves two more kills. They're actually not ending here. All right, not ending. So this is once again giving them an opportunity to come and try and end the game on the side of Winky Face. Yes, they lost a bunch of people. And let's take a look at what we have here. We have a Shadow Orb Shadow Strike. Uh, we have the Angel of Death here. We have a Radiating Faith. This is highly unusual. Uh, the Radiating Faith, which is even more unusual. And we have Unconquered Spirit. Additionally, we have no choice yet from the Dragon Queen herself. Other side, we have the Respect the Elderly, Nor Pain, Ice Blink, the Dragon Awakens, and finally Dying Breath. And they revamped uh, Dying Breath, if I remember correctly. Now, lots of map control in level 20s here might be what the doctor ordered for Winky Face. But they have to deal with top lane, bot lane, and really they're going to... The only good news, or maybe the bad news here is that for two things, they need to push in top lane. And the bad news is that the bot lane also needs to be cleared. The good news is they have to go to the top shrine and clear that, and they'll clear the lane simultaneously. The bad news is that they really wanted it in the bot lane because the bot lane is where they can end the game. A Poofy is going to be going on in. They should actually be looking for this fight right now if they can get it. It'd be, oh, G Money is going in on deep. Does have the ignore paint. Stay a while unless it's going to connect. APOC coming on up. We have the Ring of Frost available. We'll actually only hit one. Brick House taking a lot of damage. Purification coming out in return. But Brick House has to retreat on back. They will lose this keep. And really, they've lost a ton of heroics. The good news is that Poop Beast has APOC ready again already. Now, They need to go to the shrine. This is essentially a do or die. They need to clear. They need the shrine simultaneously. This is the worst of every world that you live in. This is the thing of nightmares that Winky Face will never smile again because you have three keeps down. You have to get to this objective. And if you don't, the game's over. And at this point, the game is over because Excel Esports is already at 20. They're going to hit 30 before we even see Winky Face here. And at which point, they literally can just go throw their bodies on this to guarantee the Punisher. Toonie Moss going to be coming on and We got G-Money on in there. The containment is coming on out too. Jenzer is taking a lot of damage. The Dragon coming on through. APOC going to seal the deal there. And with that silence, we Dying Breath coming out once again and helping to secure a second kill there. The third, the fourth, and last man standing mouth out. And we get the five-man team wipe. I mean, this was do or die. There was 
very little they can do here. We're going to see them march on in to their demise on the side of Winky Face. Winky Face trying what they can. They're split pretty heavily there. They throw out the containment disc, but they throw out the containment disc on someone it doesn't even matter. And with that, they get comboed with the APOC. And finally, the Ring of Frost and the Dragon's Arrow coming across. <clears throat> A Dragon Strike coming across. And finally, securing... All of the kills. So, taking a look at the final damage numbers. Big main on another planet once again. 34,000 damage more than the next closest. Uh, he almost doubles the damage output of anyone in this game. Hysteria, causing some hysteria by dishing out the damage as well at 44k. Spagino doing what he could, hitting 43k. If we take a look at some of the talents here as well, we did get the piercing arrows as well. And we also had the dragon hungers, the very unusual full Stormbow build. Now, the rest of those stats, we're going to see Phoenix actually falling behind Sonya. And Sonya. Did um did go wrath this time, but that is still not what you want to see out of a Phoenix getting beat by a Sonya. Additionally, Maya really getting no value for Winky Face. Only 27,000 damage. That's not exactly a game-winning damage for Winky Face. Now, total healing output, EO taking the lead there with a 15,000 lead. And taking, well, 2D Moss doing everything in his power to tank. Taking 91,000 damage versus the combined 112,000. Yeah, 100, sorry, 122,000. 122,000 damage from Diablo and Sonya. Taking a look at Soak, Spugino doing what he could to keep the game in favor of Winky face, unfortunately, it was not enough. Winning the XP wars, but losing the team fights. So, Excel Esports walking away with the 2-0. Early game, looking a little bit scary for them. But, it did not matter in the end. Because Excel Esports then just went on a tear, destroying everything in their path. And if you might say... Um, there was a poop feast being had. So we'll be right back and we'll see if uh, we can get ourselves an interview simultaneously. <laughs> 